Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. It is that time again where I give each and every one of you the power to weigh in on a book that I will read in the upcoming month. This time we're selecting the book that you want to see me read in July. And I've got five books here that I'm excited to read. So the outcome truly doesn't matter to me. I will gladly read any of these books that I'm about to show you. Hi, so this is me from not the same day, but I it's Sunday and I'm editing and filming and I realized when I did my pick a book video this month, when I filmed it, I forgot to include my little Kindle roulette game. If you don't recall or you're unfamiliar, I have over 1,400 unread books on my Kindle. This is my Kindle Fire. In an effort to cycle through some of those and get some of those into the red column, I'm going to scroll through and at random select one Kindle book to read next month. So this time I've sorted it by title. So titles with numbers are appearing at the top of the list. Titles that begin with Z will be at the very bottom of the list. And I'm just going to randomly scroll through here. Like seriously, I'm just, you know, randomly um, advancing my library. And I have... I've landed in the F's. All those scrolls and only landed in the F's. Found Near Water, a Christ Church or Christ Church, Christ Church crime thriller book one. That's by Catherine Hayden. Four Week Fiance, the Four Week Fiance series book one. This is by Helen Cooper. Sounds like a fake relationship. A Fragile Cord, a gripping psychological thriller by Emma Salisbury. Fragmented, a serial killer thriller by Colleen Connolly. Frankenstein, as in like the classic by Mary Shelley. I can tell you that I'm not reading that. I don't read, no. And Frayed Silk by Emma, uh, blah, Frayed Silk by Ella Fields. I don't know. I don't know who that, okay. So I think, so geez, this is really hard to decide. I don't know anything about these books. I don't. I don't instantly recognize any of these books, except for Frankenstein, obviously, duh. But I think I'm going to go with Four Week Fiance. It says book one. It sounds like it ends on a cliffhanger, right? Otherwise, why would it be called the Four Week Fiance series? Shit. Okay, screw it. We're going to read the Four Week Fiance. Um, I think I'm going to read the Four Week Fiance. But just to be sure... Let's go to Goodreads. So the book, A Four Week Fiance, has a 3.64 average rating, average star rating on Goodreads. It has over 4,300 ratings. So, you know, a few people have read it. Uh, what would you do if the hottest man on earth made you an offer you couldn't refuse? The sort of offer that would make you blush as he offered you whatever you wanted to make you accept. What if the offers were so spicy, so naughty, so scandalous that you wouldn't even want to tell your best friend? If you were me, you would say yes. There are three things you should know. His name is TJ Walker. He's 28, hot as can be, and he's my brother's best friend. TJ asked him to be his fiance for four weeks. I'm hoping to make the engagement real. What's immediately turning me off is that this heroine sounds like she's pretty young. So I'm going through the reviews, and I'm not going to like this book. I'm going to tell you that right now. But that's not part of the deal. Part of the deal of the Kinder Roulette is... You read what's there because it's time to read things and stop collecting unread books. Even if I hate these books, which I think by these reviews, I'm probably going to hate this book. But um, it says that there is a cliffhanger. Which, whatever. Um, and that the main characters are juvenile or immature. Um... I'm confused. Are these people supposed to be adults? Question mark. So if anything, we're going to have a really good time with this book. We're going to dissect this book and I'm going to tell you why it sucks if in fact I don't like it. On the other hand, going through all of this stuff, I'm setting the bar really, really low. So this book might surprise me. It might not be that bad of a read. Again, Four Week Fiance, that's my Kindle Roulette book that I'll be diving into in July. Probably won't be as successful as June's, but... Who knows? We're in it for the fun. So that's all. Back to the original video. The first book that I have here is The Marriage Pact. This is by Michelle Richmond. 
I don't think that I've owned this for an extremely long time, but to be honest with you, I can't remember when and where I purchased it. It does have one of those premises, though, that has always stuck in my head. There wasn't any doubt of what this book was about when I pulled it off my shelf. It was a uh, released... This paperback edition would have come out in 2018. So <clears throat> The Marriage Pact is a book about newlyweds who join a club, so to speak. It's like Fight Club for newlyweds where you join the marriage pact and there's all of these rules that you have to adhere to with the promise that if you do, your marriage will stay healthy and happy for years to come. It says things like always answer the phone when your spouse calls, exchange thoughtful gifts monthly, plan a trip together once per quarter, which that's a little excessive if you ask me, but whatever. Uh, and never mention the pact to anyone. That's why it sounds like Fight Club. But it also says that someone breaks the rules and it's a, it's a <clears throat> psychological thriller and claims to be fast paced, nail biter, a book that will keep you up all night and make you second guess everything you've ever loved. High concept, fast moving thriller. So it just sounds like a fun time, basically. It does have a 3.62 average rating on Goodreads, which is pretty respectable. Next is a book that's maybe a bit of a departure from the things that you normally see on this channel, but this is House Rules. This is by Jody Pico. This is the story of a teenager with Asperger's syndrome and which is something that's come up recently on this channel a few times thanks to uh, books by Helen Huang. But this particular teen has a focus or obsessive, an obsessive focus on forensic analysis. And so within his small town, he's often having run-ins with the police where he's showing up to crime, scene, crime scenes and telling the police officers what to do. Now, at one point, there's a murder in this town. And because of some of his characteristics and some of his behaviors, the police actually think that he could be a suspect of the crime. And so the book is about the entire family going through that experience, the parents of this child, and also the, the brother of this boy who is just sick and tired of everything being not normal because of his brother. So I bought this book used from Second and Charles because I've always wanted to try out a Jody Pico book. And this one appealed to me because of the autism or Asperger's aspect. And that's always been something that I've been fascinated with long before this most recent, uh, long before the more recent uh, mentions of the subject. That one is available as well for me to read in July. This has a 4.02 average rating on Goodreads, which is kind of hard for for me to rely on too much because this isn't the first book by this author and it's an author who is very beloved by a lot of people and if you've read Jodi Pico before you and it wasn't this book and you didn't like it you're not going to come back and, and re, you know what I mean like chances are that review is skewed by a lot of real intense fans of the author. So take it at face value. That's what it is. 4.02 average rating. Moving on. <laughs> the next book I have is I've wanted to read for a really long time. It's Berlin Syndrome. This is by Melanie Justin. This is the story of a girl who finds herself being held captive. And she's in Berlin, she meets a guy, they have an instant attraction, she agrees to go back to his, his home or his apartment, and then he refuses to ever let her leave. This is another psychological thriller. Uh, when I purchased it, it was because I had heard things, good things about it. Uh, it is, it has been adapted to film, but I haven't seen it. And the Goodreads average rating for this one is 3.36. So I think it's a bit of a specific taste kind of book. 
um, but as someone who is really fascinated also by Stockholm syndrome and and the relationship between two people in a captive and captor scenario, I'm just really drawn to this book. Next, this one is probably pretty familiar to most everybody. It is The Breakdown by B.A. Paris. I bought this immediately after I read Drawing a Blank. Behind Closed Doors. I bought this immediately after reading Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris, which I really liked. And yet I never got to this. I bought this used copy. It's the story of a woman who is traveling, I believe, home one night. And she comes upon or passes a stranded motorist. And she debates with herself about stopping to help the woman, but doesn't. And then finds out later that that woman was killed. So she's dealing with a lot of guilt, but she's keeping everything to herself because she wasn't supposed to be where she was in the first place. She starts to live and breathe the obsession with this crime that she could have possibly uh, prevented. So, um, like I said, I mean, not a new book. A ton of people have probably heard of this. It has a 3.9 average rating on Goodreads, and it's high time I read it, if it's worth it. But you guys are going to have to tell me to do it. <laughs> Lastly is a horror novel, The Last Days of Jack Sparks. This is by Jason Arnop. I can't remember where I bought this book either, but I know that I did haul it here on BookTube a while ago. <laughs> The synopsis of this book is not very telling at all. What we know is that Jack Sparks was a journalist and he was researching the occult. He was also not doing it with any sort of respect and ended up, um, it says, starting like a Twitter shitstorm or something um, because he mocked an exorcism. And this is supposedly the book that Jack Sparks was writing. It's written in first person, but we know Jack Sparks is dead, and it does say Jack Sparks died while writing this book. So it's one of those trippy fiction and fiction kind of things. It is a horror novel. Um, let's see. Chuck Wendig. It's a pretty that's a pretty well-known name. It manages the rare feat of being both horrific and hilarious, which makes me insanely jealous of Arnop and has me considering how to kill him and consume his mighty power. I mean, what a book blurb. That's awesome. This one also has a 3.9 average rating on Goodreads. And I really like the prospect of reading a funny horror novel. I think that everybody should do that. <laughs> so if you want me to read The Last Days of Jack Sparks, let me know. Again, we have that book. We have The Marriage Pact by Michelle Richmond, House Rules by Jody Pico, Berlin Syndrome, Berlin Syndrome by Melanie Joosten, The Breakdown by B.A. Paris, and of course, The Last Days of Jack Sparks by Jason Arnott. So let me know which book you think that I should read. I, I'll be considering every single comment on this video until um, July begins. So plenty of time to get your opinion in there. I don't think that I'm rooting for one over the other. I really can't think, I, I really don't think that yeah, whatever you decide, I'm happy, happy with that. So go ahead and pick my book. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all very soon.